Weber here. We are ready to start analyzing um, Outcast by Claude McKay. All right, so you already have your paper set up, which we did in the last video, all right? So we are going to start analyzing, and I'm going to go through this kind of quick because the bell's about to ring, and I don't want it to disturb my video. All right, so first things first, all right? We're going to, on the left-hand side, number the lines, all right? So one, two, three, all right? So you should get to the number 14, right? Which tells us if 14 lines, it's all one block, it's probably a sonnet. If you don't know what a sonnet is, pause this video and Google it. Or go to YouTube, there's great videos. All right, so sonnet. Now, we normally do on the left-hand side here, breaking down the stanzas and numbering those two. But we only have one stanza. But sonnets actually have distinct parts. So we're going to label those. I'm going to tell you what they are. All right. And I'm going to show you. We're going to draw a bracket around lines one through four and put a number one. This is the first quatrain. All right. These lines are related in a special way. Then we do the next eight lines. All right. And we label those number two. That's an octave. All right. Oct for eight. And then finally, the last two lines gets a number three, and that's a couplet, right? It rhymes. Okay. Now, when we do our summary, right, I've drawn a line. This will be for part one, the quatrain, part two, the octave, part three, the couplet, all right? And all you're doing is reading the poem and summarizing those lines. What do those lines say? All right. So let's look at the first one really quick and see if we can figure it out. Actually, I jumped the gun. The other thing you need is the rhyme scheme. How could I forget? So, you know, at the end of the line, there, there we go. Anytime we have the last letter or last word rhyme with the last word of another line, we give it a letter. First rhyme is A, second rhyme is B, second is C. So let me give you an example. Um, so came and frame, both rhyme. Came is the first rhyme. We get an A on the end. Let's see, A and A. And then longs and songs rhyme, but that's a new rhyme, right? It doesn't rhyme with came. So that's B. So we have A, B, A, B. So what I want you to do is pause this video and see if you can get the rest of the rhyme scheme correct, all right? Anytime you have a new rhyme, start a new letter, C. D, E, and so on. All right. So pause this, and I'm just going to look down and label mine real quick. All right. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully you got this. It's A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, meaning the rhymes alternate. Except for that couplet, right? That's what makes it a couplet. It's a pair, paired of rhyming lines, right? This makes it a very special kind of sonnet, right? Sonnets are determined by this pattern, the A B A B. This is a Shakespearean sonnet, right? It's done in the form made famous by Shakespeare. And for extra credit, if you're watching this video, write down on a slip of paper the other two most famous kinds of sonnets and turn it into me but don't tell anybody. All right, so to continue, let's look at those first four lines. For the dim regions whence my fathers came, my spirit bondaged by the body longs. Words felt but never heard, my lips would frame. My soul would sing forgotten jungle songs. Okay, so Claude McKay's writing during the Harlem Renaissance, and this is important to know. Um, he is talking about the dim regions are Africa, right? The forgotten jungle song, Africa. Um, but it's maybe not a realistic idea of Africa. It's it's romanticized, right? It's like this ideal, perfect, romantic um, thought of what Africa is, right? My spirit bondaged by the body longs. 
So our summary is he longs to be in Africa. All right. He longs to be in Africa. I'm just writing that in our summary box. And the bell's about to ring, so I'm sorry. I'll have to deal with it. He longs to be in Africa. All right. So, second set. I would go back to darkness and to peace, but the great Western world holds me in fee, and I may never hope for full release. He wants to go back to Africa, but he's held here in Western civilization, right? In America, he can't even hope for release. While to its alien gods, I bend my knee, right? Gods that aren't from his land, right? From his heritage. Something in me is lost, forever lost. Some vital thing has gone out of my heart and I must walk the way of life, a ghost. Okay, so he's saying he's trapped in Western culture, right? He's trapped by Western culture. But not only that, it costs him, right? It costs him something to continue to live in this culture, right? It, it's, he's a ghost, right? He's no longer in touch with his heritage, with his roots, right? Um, yeah, so what am I writing? He's trapped by Western culture. Um, cost is a lack of connection. All right, connection with his ancestry, even with knowing himself and who he is. All right, so I just added that in my little box, what I just said. Oop, oop. And then finally, the couplet. <sighs> For I was born far from my native clime, under the white man's menace, out of time. Okay, well, things just shifted, right? The tone really changed here. First, climb, meaning like climate. Right, land outside of his natural land. I was born far from my ancestors, right? We know watching the transatlantic slave trade video, right? Um, all about slavery and how people were born into, born, sold into bondage, right? Brought across the Atlantic. We know all about that. So that's what he's saying is I was born far from this. Meaning by the time he was born, you know, the, the way, first waves of slaves have, had already come here and been settled, right? So he's, he's detached. He's not part of that generation that even really remembers Africa as it was, right? He has this romantic idea, right? Under the white man's menace, out of time. Okay, so white man's menace. He's not talking about slavery here, though right? Because this is a little bit later. This is from the Harlem Renaissance. Still a lot of racism, though, right? Still a lot of oppression. Um, black people having limited rights, not being able to do the same thing as white. Um, a lot of hate crimes, lynchings, things like that still going on at this time, okay? So he wasn't born under slavery. That is not what he means by menace. He means the political climate, right? How dangerous it is to be a black person at this time. Um, racism, segregation, right? Jim Crow laws, all of this, that is what he's talking about by the menace, right? The culture that keeps black people down at this time, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So in the box, we're gonna say, right? He has a lack of connection, but this lack of connection is because he was born under the white man's menace, right? So he was born, it's kind of, I don't know if it's really a longing, but just a statement. I'm going to put that statement of his connection impossible, being impossible, right? The connection is impossible because of when he was born and when and where. All right, there it is right there, statement of the connection being impossible. All right, I'm gonna go over the last couple things in the next video, because I'm almost at my limit and the bell's about to ring. Um, so stay tuned for that, it's really easy.